So if you have an Ecobee thermostat, you're probably wondering what more can I do with these little sensors? I'm gonna show you how I am using them coming up next. Hi, this is Justin from Simply Smart, where we make smart home technology as easy as one, two, three. So if you're interested in smart home technology, consider subscribing for more content like this. Also check out the video description for the three simple steps to building the ultimate smart home. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is getting a little bit more function out of our Ecobee thermostat sensors. So what these are, if you don't have an Ecobee thermostat, you need to get one because it is the best thermostat that you can get. Um, it's the only thermostat that has room sensors that not only detect the temperature, but they also detect the motion in the room to determine if the room is occupied or not. So what that does is if it knows the temperature here and it knows the temperature over there and knows the temperature over there, and then it looks at all of the different sensors. And if there's motion in those rooms, what it does is it takes into consideration that temperature the temperature over here, the temperature over here, and it averages those three, that is what it uses to determine whether it needs to turn on the AC or heat or whatever season it is to keep you comfortable. So if one room is really cold, another room is really warm, it will take the average of those two so you don't get super cold or super hot in one of the other rooms. So what it does is it's basically saving you energy because if you only have a thermostat in one location in your hallway, which no one spends time in the hallway, it's not gonna give you an accurate representation of the temperatures throughout the house. So how this works is this is not a motion sensor. What this is, is a presence sensor. So what it does is basically, if you walk into a room and walk out, it probably will not determine that there is anyone present in that room. You have to be actively in that room and then it will say, okay, someone is there. I'm going to consider this sensor in the heating and cooling of the house. But what you can do is you can use this sensor in smart things. All of these Ecobee sensors show up in smart things as temperature and motion sensors. So if we have this one here in the kitchen, it'll know if someone is here and it will be present. Now let's go ahead and look at what it looks like in the SmartThings app. All right, so I'm over in the SmartThings app now and let's find our kitchen. All right, so here is the kitchen and then here is the Ecobee kitchen. So that is this sensor right here and it says that motion is detected and currently right now it's 76. It's probably a little warm because I've been holding it in my hand um, and you can actually look at the history of the temperatures by hour, by day. You have all this information. Um, you can see um, the history in a list format. So you can filter it by temperature or motion. So if you only wanted to see when it was motion. Um, so motion at 9.29 p.m., which right now it's 9.41. So, um, it's been quite a while that since it's detected motion. How I am using this is we'll go over to Sharp Tools and I'll show you what I am doing with Sharp Tools. And basically what we're gonna do is when this doesn't detect motion and some of these lights are on or the dining room light is on or something is on in this area and no one is here, it's going to turn it off for us. So let's take a look at our Sharp Tools rules. All right, so over in our Sharp Tools rule engine, if we go down, I named all of these to be Ecobee. So right at the top there, I have Ecobee Kitchen Off, Ecobee Living Room Off, Ecobee Master Off, Ecobee Office Off, and Ecobee Theater Off. So I have a sensor in all of those rooms and if there is no motion and something is on in that room, it will go ahead and turn it off. Let's just look at the kitchen since we are here in the kitchen. So if we tap on the roll, um, the trigger is 
Ecobee Kitchen Motion changes to inactive. So this will change to inactive. And if the kitchen light is on or the dining room light is on, which those are our two primary lights that are on if someone is in the kitchen typically, um, if any of those are on, then what it's going to do is it's going to turn off the kitchen light, the kitchen light right, the bar light, the bar light left, the bar light right, and the dining room light. And then it's gonna go ahead and send me a notification letting me know that the kitchen power down has been activated. So that's just another way that the Ecobee can save you energy and add convenience to your smart home. Now I do wanna show you one other one, and this one is the Ecobee Theater. So in our theater room, when we are in there, there's not a ton of motion because we're just sitting there watching a movie or a TV show. So when we go in there, what I've done is I've done a little bit different trigger. So say if your room is not super active, um, what you might wanna do is say, when the Ecobee movie room mo motion stays inactive for two hours. So say if we were watching a movie and then we left and we actually left the light on or we left the projector on or something like that, two hours after the Ecobee sensor detects there's no, no one in the room, there's no activity, what it will do is it will turn off all that stuff. So we may not even be home and it will turn off all that stuff for us automatically. And it's basically the same thing. You just have a couple if conditions here that will say if one of these is on, which is basically one of the two things that are on in that room, then it will go ahead and turn off those things and then send us a notification. So that is just one way that you can use these Ecobee sensors. You already have these sensors, so you might as well use them for something else other than just the Ecobee sensors and the temperature sensors. So let me know if you are using your, your Ecobee sensors in a different way down in the comments. I would love to hear them because maybe I would like to incorporate some of that stuff into my smart home as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. Also check out the other videos on the screen now and I will see you in the next video.